Hello everybody and welcome back to another painting tutorial. This time we're going to paint a high elf horse and we're going to start off with his uh, coat. It's all white. So I did prime the model white uh, to begin with and um, I'm going to use a verdigris color from Game Color. Uh, this is not actually my idea. I saw it uh, painted by Patrick uh, Patrick Puter Sand, I think is the way he pronounced his name, through a, a Call of the Crown competition. He painted some high elves. And I saw Patrick using this kind of color as the sort of the shaded areas uh, instead of using gray. And I thought that's a really cool idea. I really want to try that myself. So I'm just using some of this verdigris with some white ink. And I'm sort of mixing that up using a size 2 brush and I'm going to just give the all all of the the coat on this horse uh, a pretty good solid um, layer of this paint and I've got to do this you know a number of times but about two or three times basically to get the best coverage of it, of it. so um, uh, so again it's it's if, if you want to use this color I, I really recommend it uh, I found it worked really well with using the whites with the verdigris um, but if you prefer that kind of grey look like the studio paint job, um, that's totally fine. And um, I would use like a really light grey, um, something that's yeah, sort of a hue that's sort of in between white and um, uh, like a light, really light blue grey. Um, something like verdigris, but just in the it's sort of a more bluish kind of white rather than a, a green white. Um, so once you've got most of the base coats down, I'm just going to apply a bit of a straight sort of verdigris just to the inner folds of the of the um, of the horse's uh, coat here. So that gives just a bit more distinction, a bit more uh, depth to those parts because everything that's sort of raised on an area is going to be white anyway. Now I'm gonna I'm just gonna take some of this. It's just called heavy, heavy brown, and um, it's from a Vallejo range. But you know I don't want to really give. You know, I don't think paint names are really relevant. You just paint with whatever paints you have. I don't want people to go out and buy specific paints that I've used here because other paint ranges have something very uh, equivalent to it. I like using the these kind of very opaque, um, heavy paints from Vallejo Model Color uh, because they give a lot of really good coverage, especially for colors that don't necessarily have a very opaque sort of base to them anyway, strong pigment to them. So I'm just using that, and I'm just going to give that all the the skin on the or the the coat of the um, of the horse. I'm going to give that a good layer of that first. And uh, again, I'll need to apply at least two layers of it to get the best coverage. Um, I prefer using a white undercoat for my miniatures. I know some people like using black as a, as a prime color for their models or a dark gray. It's whatever you know you feel best. I think for high elves, I think white is the best for them. Um, unless you're doing something like something that has an awful lot of armor on them, like the um, High Elf Swordmasters, for example. Maybe you can get away with doing them in black, but I think for the horses and the the, um, the riders and that kind of thing, I think white's best. So giving that a good coat and, um, and making sure we cover everything. There are places underneath the horse that are really difficult to get to, and that's Bit of a slight oversight on my part I should have just not attached it to the base and painted everything underneath and then attached it to the base once all that was done because you've got not only his legs and that kind of thing but you've also got the inner side of the um, the white coat that he's wearing as well so that's get that's that's be quite difficult to get to but again you're not going to see it so much because when it's on the game table you never sort of look under that far anyway so it's not such a major issue i'm sort of just trying to cover everything as quickly as i can so we can cover as many of the different techniques and um, the process of how to paint this as quickly and uh, to the to the point as possible i'm getting a blue now now this is a dark prussian blue that i'm using as a vallejo um, model model color 
And again, just grab a blue from your collection that's got, got quite a uh, deep tone to it um, as like a base color. I tend to work from you know dark to light in most cases. Um, so I tend to like going for a dark blue and then sort of blending it up to the lighter hues of blue and the highlights and that kind of thing. But if you prefer using sort of like a mid-tone blue and, and giving it a wash, um, that's perfectly acceptable as well. So what do you think is the best way of doing it? So giving that a full coat of that, we are going to mix a bit of that verdigris into the blue now to create this little lighter hue of the blue. And we're going to blend that into the saddle. Now the paint is actually still wet, so the base coat is still wet. So we're going to blend that in, sort of like a wet blend. And that's usually how I prefer to do the blending. Um, while the base coat is still wet, uh, blend the lighter colors over the top. And they sort of just meld together and, and you get those nice tr transitions there. And it's basically just building that up lighter and lighter as we go. Now we're going to add some more verdigris to that blue, the dark Prussian blue. And um, we're just going to keep highlighting up on the raised areas. We're going to sort of create this sort of band um, down below. Of course, the rider will sit on top of the horse. You're not going to see the very top of it. So that's not really the most important part to paint. But these sides of the saddle, I want to sort of make them a lot lighter and uh, a lot more distinctive. So we're just going to blend in our lighter hues of that um, that highlight in there and sort of just push that paint down and um, create this sort of uh, nice transition there. And from here, we're just going to get some of that really light verdigris blue mix and um, using a size zero brush. Now the brushes I'm using are from uh, Rosemary & Co and a bit of a shout out to them because uh, not only their service is great, uh, the brushes are fantastic. I've got some Series 99 brushes that I'm using for this now. And they've been really, really good. I mean, for cost effectiveness, they're just amazing. Uh, I was using Artist Opus brushes, but they're so expensive. Uh, so prohibitively expensive, beautiful brushes, but so so uh, like you know, about twelve pounds a pop, um, and I couldn't afford to pay for those any longer. Uh, so I've gone to Rosemary Co. Uh, Rosemary and Co. I've used them before many years ago, but they do have a different, uh, many different kinds of series of brushes, and I think, and they're all Kalinsky sables or red sables. So some are cheaper than the others. I thought I'd give the ninety nine range a go. Um, the, z the zero size brush has just been an absolute workhorse and I've been able to paint so much with it and it's just giving me this consistent, you know, really nice fine pointed uh, end and tip to the brush every time. Uh, the, the number one and, and the number two brushes have sort of splayed out. The brushes are sort of splayed out and worn out uh, after, you know, a fair, you know, I paint quite a lot. So, you know, they've been pretty, pretty good for the value. I need to place another order again uh, for those in the future to get some more brushes in uh, but really really impressed with what they've what they've got there so basically I sort of just lined in as you saw lined in the highlights just around the edges of the saddle and now I've gone in with some black just some pure black and I sort of just want to tidy things up now and again uh, this process um, may be a little bit too technical for people and if you want to skip this process or the black lining uh, feel free to do that if you've got like a Sharpie pen or something like that, maybe you want to just sharp, Sharpie pen it in. I don't see why you wouldn't want to try it at least because effectively I'm just using the paintbrush like a pen and I just sort of uh, line it in. And um, just to give that distinctive line between each of the colors. I actually had someone uh, laugh at me on the <laughs> Instagram saying, do you still black line your miniatures? And I said, yes. And they thought that was hilarious because they said it's such an old school technique and no one does black lining anymore. Um, and uh, fair enough, I think I think in most cases that's true. 
uh, they use like different darker colors like dark browns and dark grays and that kind of thing to do their this, this to separate uh, colors naturally um, uh, this is old school techniques old school painting so we are going to black line everything I find it the best way for um, for this kind of style and error of miniature and once we've done the black lining we're probably going to find some lines that are not that straight not so so clear so we're going to go that back with the white and tidy that up and also I'm going back in with the brown and I'm just going to just tidy up areas that I think need an, an extra coat and um, a little bit later we can see how we sort of going to highlight that brown uh, now in the studio pages the brown it's not brown actually the champion's horse is gray but I, I really like this sort of uh, really soft brown uh, on the other silver helm horses that I want to keep them all sort of pretty consistent looking so I've gone with this color instead now now this one we're going to highlight the brown I've added some what's called dead flesh now dead flesh is kind of like a beige like a greenish kind of bre uh, beige so um, I forget what it's called I think it might be called rotting flesh in the old Citadel paint range and of course the game color range that the names are very similar if not exactly the same in some cases uh, I'm mixing that in with the brown and I'm sort of just now uh, going over and covering the base color areas starting from top to bottom and we just want to create this transition there so we've got this little lighter on the top here and underneath on the on underneath the body it's going to be a bit darker again we're not going to see those areas so much but um, uh, we want to create this sort of a, a light brown for the body of the horse Okay, now I'm just going to take some white and I'm going to just start sort of really creating these really nice distinctive fine highlights here on the saddle parts, the strap that goes under the underbody of the horse. And I just found some areas that um, I wasn't really pleased with the highlights in blending on the saddles. So I'm going to go back and start trying to fix up the and correct some of those uh, blends there. So you will find me going back and forth uh, during the painting process because sometimes, you know, when you do something, you think it looks good and then you come back and you think, oh, actually, I want that a little bit lighter or I want that transition to be more, um, more blended through or more lighter or darker or whatever it might be. So you might have to go back and, um, and go over it again if, if need be. Uh, maybe you're just happy with painting it in a sort of an ultramarine, ultramarine's blue and giving it a, a sort of a sharp highlight around the edges and that will be just sufficient for what you need and that's fine too. Okay here so on my palette I've got some it's called elfic flesh it's basically like a very light creamy white color and just using the uh, the side of my bristles there I sort of just went over the the tail just to highlight areas there I'm not using it for the horse the horse is pure white so don't get confused with those two colors there um, I'm just going over and cleaning up now the coat on the horse making sure everything looks pure white and um, to, to, a, to a degree where I'm really happy with uh, the way that's looking. You can add some more um, white ink into there if you wanted to, just to keep it nice and smooth, or just use a bit of water. Make sure you, I'm using a wet palette by the way, in case you're wondering, it's, a, it's one of those um, evergreen uh, paint palettes, wet palettes, uh, which are great because it just keeps your paint nice and fluid, and especially in really hot temperatures and humid temperatures we're suffering now in, in uh, summer, it's good to keep your paints alive. Mm. 
I'm just doing some black lining now on all the edges where the folds of the coat and other areas meet. And um, now we're going to do some of the fun parts, which is going to be the freehand. Um, now I'm using the same dark Prussian blue, and I'm basically just going to draw a line all around the barding of the horse. And uh, you know it, it's going to be a fairly thin line to start off with. We might thicken it up a little bit later, but yeah, picking a point to start from on one edge and sort of just dragging your brush along. Obviously these are going to be the, the most difficult parts to get done and get done well. It may, it may be that you need to try three or four times to get this right. Um, but if you just take your time and just take it easy, don't rush it. Um, and you can see, you know, my hand, how it's positioned on the horse. I've always got like my pinky finger, pinky finger sort of resting on something to keep my, my hand balanced and keep it straight. And uh, yeah, you just need to draw a line all the way across, all the way along until you get to the very end. And then we can start making those really cool looking uh, sort of wave shapes on that, um, on that line there. So again, it's sort of, I always sort of, you know, say that I'm sort of penciling in or uh, rather than brushing in uh, areas of detail. If you have one of those Sharpie pens or those Gundam style paint pens and you want to give it a go with that, if you're more comfortable doing it that way, um, go go for it, try it. Uh, I've, ne I've never done it myself, but I'm sure it will work just as well. Because really that's effectively what you're doing, you're sort of just drawing in. I'm sort of creating that sort of wave effect first and then sort of just rebalancing uh, the inner part and the outer part of that wave so it's sort of uh, getting the angles right so it looks like it's sort of you know coming in um, to that line and sort of flowing back on the, on the outside of the line of, of that wave line as well and repeating that process over and over and over again we're going to skip through all that anyway but you can see the first part where I'm doing this and basically it's just effectively the same process for the whole model so um, but it's I think in practice if you can want to draw it out on a piece of paper first or whatever to get used to uh, the shape that you're going to be uh, painting in, I would recommend doing that. And um, yeah, I mean, that's it really guys. So that's probably the easiest one of all the freehand we're going to do on this model so far. So once you've done this small section, you should be pretty well and confident to do the other parts. Now, of course, you know, when I do something like this, it's not going to be perfect the very first time, so I might have to go back with the white and sort of tidy things up and make sure everything sort of lines up nicely. Um, so don't get too disheartened if things don't look perfect the first time, because even with someone like myself being painted like 30 odd years, um, I don't get things correct the first time always. And um, I like to go back and sort of just, just line things up correctly making sure everything looks um, the same in terms of shape and scale and that kind of thing. Um, but um, yeah, practice makes perfect as they say. So the more your time you put into it, the better it should look. Now, if it doesn't look really great, you can always go over it with the white again and then re repaint the, the whole line process uh, if that's something that you think that you know you want to really start over again. Um, you shouldn't really need to. You can just sort of correct it with the, the white paint and sort of just go over things. But just keep your paints nice and thin. And you might have to do a couple layers. Uh, don't put it on too thick, especially with paints like white. Uh, they will look quite... Um, you can see the paint layers and the, the paint build up using these paints. So just take your time, take it easy, and you'll get there in the end. So presto, here it is, we've done it. So uh, all the freehand at the bottom, 
of the barding is now complete and we are ready to move on to the next stage. And here we're going to do one of these kind of star shaped uh, insignia on the back of the barding. I'm going to just pencil in uh, like a cross shape to start off with. Um, now going by the Studio Paint job, uh, I'm sort of doing mine a little bit differently. Um, they've got a, how many points? One, two, three, four, five, six. I think they've got like a six pointer star on this one. And I think mine is going to be a four pointed star, a uh, five, oh, six pointed star, sorry. Um, which is fine. Uh, it's sort of a little bit of my mistake not checking back and referencing the picture. Um, but I'm, I'm quite happy with just doing a six pointed star rather than eight pointed star for this one. So just lining that in, and then we're going to start shaping these points. So we we're trying to make it, looking at the picture as well, we're sort of making it sort of very fine to the top and sort of just broadening down and tapering off at the end to the center. And look, you'll see that I'm not doing it perfectly the first time. They're, they're, the lines are going to be too thick and maybe they're not long enough. And I've just got to keep going back and just reassessing um, how it's going and I think if I think I actually well that doesn't look really like the studio picture I've got to just you know, re refine and redefine the edges just going back with, with some white paint you can do that don't worry um, it's all about you know self-correcting here and there every now and again um, just taking a bit of a break have a look at the picture are you, are you happy with it does it look the same well actually no it doesn't this, this part's a bit longer this part's not as thick um, and sort of just going there from, from there basically and um, just trying to redefine it and uh, do it the best you can. So it's from this stage where I think, okay, well, some of the lines are too big and too thick and um, too stubby in the way they look. So I'm going to go back with the white and a bit of that verdigris, and I'm going to go back and sort of just line in areas and sort of taper things off, taper the lines off a bit. I know that that last, that big one down the bottom is way too broad. So again, just sort of tapering it off again with the paint and making sure everything all sort of lines up nicely. Um, I think the thinner they look, the better. The thicker they look, the sort of they're just too big. Um, we are going to paint a gemstone in the center of that star um, a little bit later on, but for now we're sort of just making sure, just sort of self-correcting and making sure that star looks as good as it can be before we go on to uh, painting in that gemstone. Okay, so now we're at the stage where we can paint in that gemstone now, getting the just the shape of it. I'm just using uh, verdigris for this, so I'm just, just painting in the shape of a little oval uh, gemstone shape there, and right in the center. And here again, I'm sort of just, again, just readjusting what I think it should look like. It looked a bit too thick at the end there as well, so I'm just going back and correcting that, tapering off again. And now I'm getting a much more uh, defined look to the star, uh, a much, much happier sort of representation to the studio model uh, version. So yeah, I think thinner, thinner the better. So as, as thin as you can make those lines on that star, I think the better it will look. And, um, and once that's done, we can get on to painting that gemstone.
Okay, guys, so now I'm going to use some red here, and I think I'm just using vermilion, so that's like a uh, Vallejo model colour paint. It's just basically red. Um, I'm trying to look for like a more vibrant um, red that I, that I have in my paint collection at the moment, so you can see it there. I've got two reds there, I've actually got one that's like a gory red, uh, which is a, like a darker darker red. I'm using that as the top, as part of the top of the gemstone. Adding in some black ink into that mix as well, and we're gonna I'm gonna cap that dome of the um, the gemstone with that black dark black color uh, because we want to keep that transition between dark to light. And the top is gonna be dark, the bottom is gonna be lighter, and here it's just uh, yeah adjusting those. Uh, transitions as best we can on a very very small area um, sometimes the smaller the area is easier than a much larger area because you can see a lot more and um, uh, the you know the cross between the transitions are much much uh, smaller and much narrower so it should be quite it should be a bit easier to do this one um, so I'm just adding more red and sort of just creating a balance between the, the transitions of colors and the hues there on the gemstone in a minute we can sort of highlight it and get more definition. And now adding some yellow into that red and now we're going to start just lining in the very bottom and base of the gemstone. And just adding some more black to the top and just making the bottom lighter and I think you pretty much got a, a decent looking gemstone there already um, and uh, yeah I mean you can take it as far as you want really if you can you can uh, as I'm doing here and add some more white and I've got some um, beige on on the palette too uh, creating these much lighter tones of, uh, of yellow and um, sort of yellowy white color and just doing that as a final sort of highlight down the bottom at the base of the gemstone. Of course, the final stage is just adding that little white dot of light at the very top. And down the bottom as well. And there you have it. Um, we probably will go with a bit of a black lining around the very edges of that gemstone as well, just to give it a bit more definition. Uh, but you don't really need to so much. Um, I'm actually going to highlight the edges uh, of this blue star as well. Again, that's something you don't really necessarily have to do. It's something that I, I really wanted to do anyway. So I'm just going to add a bit of vermilion to the blue. And I'm going to just line in some highlights 
onto the very edges of that, that star. Again, this process you don't really need to do. You can just keep it distinctly uh, dark blue and forego the, the highlights if you uh, don't feel uh, that's necessary. Now we're going to do this, this very same star, but this time it's going to be on the very front of the horse's barding here, right on its head, and it's going to be a lot smaller. So this could be a little bit more tricky, but we're going to try to do it because we need to add a gemstone and everything on this model, on this section of the freehand, I should say. So it's going to be, yeah, requiring a very thin brush, very steady hand. Uh, again, I'm using a z size zero uh, Rosemary and Co. 99 series brush. Um, and um, as I think that sort of delivers the best and finest lines of paint that I can get on the model. Um, maybe some people like using uh, thicker brushes, like uh, a size 1, for, for instance, which I normally do actually because even the Rosemary Poe ones have really fine, fine points. The ones that I have uh, sadly have lost their point, so I'm using this size 0 brush for that. And again, if it doesn't look, if it looks a bit messy and doesn't look exactly like the picture, don't don't stress, don't worry. We're going to have to go back and sort of correct, and um, as we're doing now, and sort of shaping up uh, the star and, and making it look um, how we want it. So when we're happy with the shape of our little star here, we're going to add the gemstone. So we're going to do the same thing, just put some verdigris or white uh, as the shape of the gem. And again, we're sort of just self-correcting, shaping, and um, doing that all the time to make sure everything sort of lines up nicely, everything's even, everything's straight. And uh, again, we're just going to pr do the pretty much the same process as the last time, using the gemstone, putting that base of red, and doing from dark to light, from the top to bottom. Um, it, of course, it's going to be in a much, much smaller area. So you really just need just a little bit of black at the top and a bit of a highlight down the bottom, um, sticking your little, you know, white dot, and that's it, really. So yeah, I think that's pretty self-explanatory.
Now once that's done, we're going to get to the final part of the freehand, and that's just doing this kind of rune or symbol uh, that the champion has on the studio paint scheme model. And um, I've, got, I've just got the book on my lap, and I'm just sort of just following uh, what's on there that I can see. So basically got this sort of uh, upside down L shape or sort of uh, L bracket type shape. And um, uh, we're just going to try to keep the lines as neat as possible, again using the zero size brush. And I'm using just the dark um, Prussian blue again for this one. And yeah, we're just going to just try to copy and emulate what's, uh, what's written and what's... Um, displayed on his barding. So it's got these kind of crest-shaped symbols on there, and there are two of them. So I'm just gonna to try to carefully define one of them, and then the other one I'm gonna, I'm gonna line as well. Again, if you've got pens to do this, uh, just try using a paint pen or a blue Sharpie, and um, that should be sufficient. Uh, I don't know how well paint handles or goes over sharpies that well I'm not really sure or whether you know doing it with something like a pen will crease and put a permanent line in the paint again I've never used them so I don't know if you've got any uh, feedback or comments on using uh, sharp pens as to do freehand on models let us know I think I've tried doing some of it on like of course banners and that kind of thing but actually applying it to like a painted surface I'm not sure how well that will handle it very uh, well, to be honest. Uh, again, I'm sort of going in with the white uh, just to shape up those little crescents there on his on his little symbol. And um, yeah, we're coming to the final stages, guys. So well done if you got this far. In the very final stages now guys so we're just going to just clean up and tidy up just check everything go over it uh, making sure everything all the transitions are just the way you want them uh, making sure the freehand you know we've got that all sort of nailed down and um, you know you're sort of happy with the outcomes there um, yeah you sort of, you'll need to go through it's like a review process at the end just double checking everything's right and um, you know I always do that with miniatures right at the very end when I think maybe something is done really well and perfect, I may have miss, missed something and uh, in the course of that, I need to go back and correct it. So we're just adding the final touches to the model and we're going to base it. And when we've based it in Goblin Green, of course, uh, you should have this as your result. So if you've made it to this far, thank you very much for watching. Please check out all our other content like My First Dwarf. Uh, recently we've uploaded one with Clem from our Discord. Check out our battle reports. Uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, watching those and commenting about uh, what you've seen there. Uh, check out our podcast, of course, that's coming out every fortnight. And if you'd like to support me and uh, the videos I make here, please become a Patreon. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Take care. See you next time.